in addition to the Hungarian National Railroad being guilty of actual genocide in that they over, over 500,000 Jews in a very short period of time were crammed into these cars in mid-1944 and brought to the Auschwitz, brought to the one or another of the camps. They also stole uh, from these people. It's because they took property in violation of uh, international law and still retain some of that property that we successfully uh, are moving forward with them. Professor Richard Weisberg's suit against the Hungarian National Railroad for its role in transporting Jews to the death camps during the Holocaust is the first of its kind to be allowed to move forward in U.S. federal court. It's not easy to sue national railroads in American federal courts. Railroads are considered under American federal law to be sovereigns, to be uh, entitled ordinarily to immunity from jurisdiction by a federal court judge. In general, you will not succeed against a sovereign unless you can show uh, one of several exceptions under that congressional statute. Uh, both the District Court and ultimately the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals a few months ago uh, said that we had adequately pleaded and proved that exception, which is called the takings exception. Why should these cases be tried here in the United States? Uh, they're open uh, because of our American, I think, notion of justice. Typically in these cases, half or more of the people suing are American citizens. The defendants in the case usually have significant ties to the United States. For example, commercially, they're doing business here. But I think it's largely because American uh, justice has shown itself to be open. Maybe it's the enormity of the crimes. Maybe it's the fact that many of these people, not only when we started, but now, some of the victims that we represent are the actual victims. They're people who were pushed into boxcars. They were 7, 8, 10, 12 years old. The, the stories are not only dramatic and tragic from a human point of view, but they cry out for a measure of legal justice. There isn't that much else that you can do. This isn't the first time Weisberg's fought for the rights of the Holocaust victims in U.S. courts. The French government awarded him the Legion of Honor in 2008 after he recovered about $50 million stolen from Jews by French, British, and U.S. banks. Individual Jewish bank accounts had been uh, blocked. It wasn't so much a question of Aryanized or taken over by a separate person who was non-Jewish. It was literally a question of banks blocking the Jews' access to their own bank accounts. In most cases, uh, no record was found of what uh, happened to those assets. The banks in France anticipated, we would say, jumped the gun on any legal demand that they actually block these accounts. The idea that uh, a bunch of bankers in those days got together and without having been told by any government, either Vichy or the occupying government, the Nazis, without having been officially ordered, started the process of identifying who their Jewish clients were first, and then when they were convinced that client X was Jewish, uh, blocking their accounts before they had been ordered to do so became extremely important, I think, in the development of our case. So that was a, a case of dusty fingers uh, eventually uh, leaving a dusty imprint on, uh, on an American federal judge. So, so how did that feel to you as a lawyer and just as a human being to win those cases and bring a measure of justice to those victims and their heirs? It's, it's absolutely terrific, and no one is upset or, uh, or in any way uh, scornful that they might be receiving uh, a dime on a dollar, to use that colloquialism. The, the, the victims or their heirs are thrilled that uh, their stories have been told in court and to some extent in front of French administrative agencies and that the result of their memory being honored, they're actually getting a certain amount of money is almost trivial. But of course, it's, it's, it's terrific, and it's the, way, the only way we can really show them they have listened to you. Weisberg says these experiences are part of the reason he loves being a lawyer. The beautiful thing about becoming a lawyer is that whatever the dream uh, that I think motivates a lot of people to go to law school, Whatever that dream is can be followed through legal training better than in any other way if you really want to change things. I think that, uh, at least my own experience uh, and that of many, many other people my age, younger, indicates that law is the way to 
uh, to get things done that are really vitally important to you.